As the sun slowly began its work in Connecticut, Joe Hughes was excited about the job he had to do. I know when I woke up this morning, I was going to be doing something real special. Hughes and several other Pratt & Whitney employees from East Hartford's Commercial Engines Aftermarket Operations visited Enfield, Connecticut's as Nuntuck Community College to discuss manufacturing growth, including aftermarket at Pratt & Whitney and what it means for future machinists and welders hungry to start their careers. The visit was timed with Manufacturing Month, recognizing the importance of the industry to local economies. For us, it's about making sure that we're partnering with all the right technical schools. There's an industry that's growing significantly. The company's need for employment expansion is a message that is gaining traction both in Connecticut and around the globe. But to showcase what it's really like to work for an aerospace leader is best told by those living it now. So they're trying to get that interest out there, that knowledge, that understanding, say, hey, you can work in manufacturing. You can be a manufacturer, you can be a welder, you can be a machinist. Those jobs still exist. They're not all gone. I think people are surprised actually when they come to Pratt uh, how high quality the job is and how clean the shop is and how organized it is. Kurt Burkhart on the left is one example of a new employee glad he accepted his offer to come to Pratt and Whitney. He's been a machinist for more than 20 years and believes the timing for students couldn't be better. In fact, since the beginning of 2015, Pratt and Whitney has hired more than 250 production and assembly employees within the Connecticut operations and anticipate continued hiring in the state. A lot of guys I work with, they're at the end of their careers. They're going to be retiring soon and that tribal knowledge that's in Pratt needs to be passed down to new people and to continue the good work we do. Good work and a mountain of important work soon to be in the hands of perhaps the very people Hughes and his co-workers met today. So there's a significant investment in capital, in technology, in innovation to be able to do things better, to be able to do them much faster, to be able to do them cheaper. And so in order to accomplish that, we need people to be able to run these new technologies that we don't have yet.